my little brother works in an area of town that is not that good. It's very industrial. He works at a factory and there have been murders there. <laughs> um, there are shootings a couple times a month. And essentially he was going to work one day. And as he was walking into the back door, he was walking kind of by an area that has like some water runoff. And he heard this very faint mewing, kind of like that, just like that. And he thought to himself, what is that? He goes over to investigate and all he sees is the nasty grimy water runoff and a bucket that's sitting upside right. Now, it's a hot summer day, it's probably like 95 to 100 degrees, so he goes over to investigate, and inside of this bucket, he sees this little ball of mud. Didn't even know that it was alive until it started meowing. And this bucket was literally thrown into this water runoff. It was rusty, it was grimy, it was dirty. And inside of it was a little piece of life that looked like it hadn't eaten in days. It was barely bigger than his hand. And this bucket looked like it had been thrown or placed there. You know, sometimes mother cats uh, put their kittens in like a safe place and he looked around for a mother cat, but there was none to be seen. This bucket was like placed upside right inside of, you know, this like old water runoff area. It's not like a cat could have climbed in and like tried to protect her young. It was gross, it was wet. Cats instinctively don't really love water. And it literally looked like somebody had tried to abandon a kitten. So naturally, he goes in, he scoops her up, and he recognizes that she probably hasn't eaten or drank in days. So she's so tiny that he puts her in her front pocket, he skips the rest of work, and he drives home. And kittens are naturally born blind. They don't open their eyes until about six weeks. It looked like she had opened her eyes a day or two before. So he drives her home and Julia and my mom clean her up. She's filled with fleas. She's got rust and mold and nastiness on her. And as they're cleaning her up in the sink, I walk in through the door, but I have never heard a little kitten cry so loud and fight so hard for her own life. I don't know if she was crying out of fear or discomfort or out of gratitude, um, but I've never heard a cry like that like so weak, but so determined. And then when we gave her like some mushed up food mixed with water, I've never seen a little kitten eat or drink so quickly. And once we got her cleaned up and got rid of the fleas and stuff, we naturally said, we're of course adopting her and we're gonna name her Bucket. <laughs> this is Bucket. And for the longest time, we didn't even know if we would be able to keep her. We used to have six cats and two of them passed away last year. And my father is a very stubborn man. And he said, no more cats. We were like, okay, fine, dad. Literally less than what, two months after pumpkin passes away. Um, <laughs> this little baby comes into our life covered in fleas in a bucket. And we thought that we wouldn't be able to keep her. Um, and we kind of hid her for a while. I don't get to spend a lot of time at this house. I'm only here a couple days a week, but they were literally hiding this kitten in my brother's bedroom. And I would come home and check on her. And literally every single time I came home, she's grown exponentially. She fit in one hand. And it's only been about two and a half, three weeks since that. And look at how big she is already. So we thought there's no way we could keep her. We kept her as a secret for a little while. And then when my dad found out, we thought that he would have nothing to do with it. We thought he would try to like get her adopted or something like that. And guess what? He said that we can keep her as long as she stays inside of my brother's room. So this is Bucket, the newest addition to the family. She is very bitey. She is very curious. I don't know if kittens go through teething. I know that human babies do. She likes to bite and play with everything. And again, I think that's just her spunky personality. I don't think it has anything to do with her actually teething, but maybe it does. Um, she has the roundest little belly, and I think it is so round because for the longest time she was so hungry. She just ate and ate and ate and shat for days, um, almost like she hadn't eaten at all. And you could see her little ribs the first day that we saw her. But now she's quite healthy and she's actually quite plump. She's growing exponentially and her favorite toy, believe it or not, 
are the forks, the compostable forks from Chipotle. Sometimes one of those plastic forks will fall on the floor and she will literally do the little butt wiggle. She will stock it down and she will pounce on it and she will get that compostable fork from Chipotle every single time. It's her favorite toy. You give her actual toys, she doesn't give a shit. You give her an actual cat bed or a cat tree, she does not care. She wants your dirty laundry. I believe that she believes that cat hair is both a condiment and an accessory. But I recognize that I don't always talk about my cats as much as I would like to. And her story in specific like really, really hit me because maybe I'm an idealist. I like to believe that other people operate with similar morals and values to my own. But the truth is that that doesn't always happen. And her life and almost lack thereof was a really big wake up call that there are humans in this world who still do very horrible things to other people and to other animals. And I think that as humans, we try to block out things that make us uncomfortable. So I don't always read those stories in the news. Um, but her life is just proof that when there's no hope, there might be. And it might come in the form of a factory worker shoving a kitten in his little sweater pocket. But you know what? <laughs> if that's what gets us here, I'm okay with it. So meet Bucket, and if you have any video requests with Bucket or the other cats that I consider my family members, please let me know. Always remember to be beautiful and search for hope in the strangest of places because you never know where it might appear. <laughs> Love you guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.